is brought to you by South Point Patia. A mere 50-minute flight from the nation's capital, Bangkok, I've journeyed to Thailand's northeast, specifically Nong Kai of the larger Udon Thani province, home to 1.5 million people. My first stop today is the must-see destination in this region, Sala Gao Ku, an amazing garden of sculptures. Completed in 1978, it was the life's work of Bun Lua Sarirat, Disapproving of sexual contact of any kind, Mr. Sarira chose to remain pure and unsinful for the whole of his life. In fact, he felt pity for those who had chosen to create a husband and wife union in this life, which is reflected later in a specific area of the park representing the cycle of life. Mr. Sarira directed all of his energies instead into building this amazing place with the assistance of funding from the locals and graciously donated his clarity of thought, unimpeded by petty marital concerns, to all that sought his counsel, irrespective of age, race, religion or creed. He died at the age of 64 in 1996 and his body to this day has been immortalised and rests within a glass casket in the museum on the grounds entombed eternally alone. Another of the many incredible places to visit here in northeastern Thailand is Sala Gao Ku, which translated means the amazing garden of Buddha sculptors. Each sculptor representing a story, you could quite easily spend a whole day here and get lost. As you can see here, there are several depictions of Lord Buddha meditating, all the time under the constant watch of the Naga, the seven-headed serpent, quick to his aid, should evil try and harm him in any way. This particular sculptor is depicting an attack of Lord Buddha by the kings of evil. The water goddess comes to his aid simply by a twist of her hair which washes all the baddies away. Here we see the cycle of life I referred to earlier. The entrance here representing the womb and the start of human creation and inside numerous depictions of life as we know it. Birth, marriage, sickness, work, rich, poor, law, marital infidelity and finally death. The wheel of life meaning quite simply what goes around comes around, a universal karmic law that some believe affects us all. Sala Gao Ku is a wonderful place to visit with just an admission cost of 20 baht or less than a dollar. Three kilometers from Nong Kai province one could easily spend an entire day here and hopefully gain a little insight or be reminded of some of life's simple principles we all stray away from at some time or another. My next visit was Udon Thani's Pu Prabat Historical Park. Under the supervision of the Fine Arts and Forestry Departments, it became a protected heritage area in 1981, and the park was opened to the public in June of 92. Situated some 350 metres above sea level and 150 metres above ground level, the natural rock formations here are predominantly sandstone, which erodes easily over time. Kun Som D, my guide, who has worked here since the park first opened, was to give me a personal grand tour. Okay, the, the, this is the fit, fit of the, the Buddha image standing. Before we came here, 
about 1981, uh, if the steam complete, after that time the people came to cut before we came up to it about 1981-82. Geological evidence suggests that millions of years ago, Puprabat was covered by a glacier. When the ice thawed, the moving icebergs crushed the earth with the natural force of gravity, causing the large scale of glacial erosion we see today. The park covering an area of 3,430 rye contains traces of several different civilizations. There are 23 sites containing a combined total of 68 ancient structures that are classified as prehistoric archaeological sites. This collective group is the largest and most significant group of ancient structures in the Upper Isan area. One of the many natural rock formations here at Pru Prabhat Historic Park, this one is about 10 metres high and you can just imagine Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble sitting down inside to a lovely Brontosaurus burger. Wilma! There are a couple of different trails you can take. One should allow three hours in total and be sure to take drinking water with you. Evidence of the artwork of the various civilizations is clearly apparent. The crevices and small caves that have been carved out are still used to this day as places of worship by both Buddhist and Hindu. As always, the Tourism Authority of Thailand is only too happy to assist with your local transportation when visiting the area. You're watching Destination Thailand. Chart your course for all points. Course for all. Paddy is most excited. Paddy is most index. Paddy is most in point. Has most in new heights. In new heights. Towers 30 stories over the soul after hilltop on cool after hill it on cool after hill of Pratuna the hill world class up the hill world class up the hill world class up the hill design class up the hill that own class up the hill books the own class up the hill books the own class up the hill thinks the own class up the hill will ruin your club the hill and this is your club the hill vistas or club the hill vistas or club the great journey of their lives begins here a place where skills are developed and values are cherished where friendships are forged and responsibility is encouraged, where challenges are faced and talent blooms. Give your children the best education. Regions International School, Bangkok, home of well-rounded leaders for the future. Luxury takes many forms. The Riviera Dom Tien captures the very best of today's lifestyle. Building on the success of Riviera Wongamat, Riviera Jom Tien will offer the ultimate in gracious living. 46 stories, stylish modern facilities, a family paradise just steps from the beach. Riviera Jom Tien, a new journey begins. You're watching Destination Thailand. The northeastern region of Thailand is home to many diverse places of interest. Just a 50 minute flight from Bangkok, I was on my way to take a look at Ban Chiang National Museum. Another tremendously interesting place of interest in northeastern Thailand is the Ban Chiang National Museum, an archaeological site completed in 1975 following a visit by His Royal Highness King Bhumibol in 1972 where it was suggested the place be preserved and protected from illegal digging. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1992 and is now considered an integral part of the nation's cultural history. Ban Chiang is open Tuesday to Sunday from 9am until 4pm and the admission cost is just 150 baht for foreigners. The museum is situated right next to the peaceful Buang Na Kham Reservoir. Now, as museums go, Ban Chiang is certainly of a world-class standard. It has been open to the public since 1981 and underwent a major renovation in 2006. Construction was completed in 1975, including the excavation pit. 
It hit the world stage in 1992 when the Pennsylvanian University, in cooperation with the Smithsonian Institute, organised a travelling exhibition entitled Ban Chiang, The Discovery of a Lost Bronze Age. It then travelled around the US for four years and a further year in Singapore before eventually settling here in Thailand for permanent installation. Donations have helped it to become the fine venue it is today. You'll be stepping into the past when you venture here. In fact, Ban Chiang became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1992. This scene here depicts the discovery of some important archaeological evidence. The archaeologists would take a photo with as much detail as possible before removing the piece from the site. A measuring tool was placed alongside the object for scale and the photo board was used to describe the pit layer and date of the photo. Ban Chiang is home to a large variety of interesting artefacts and prehistoric culture. The Lost Bronze Age exhibit was my personal favourite, with clear portrayal of the way of life of these people, depicting hunting, farming, pottery making, metallurgy and weaving. The Galliani Vadana building, one of the two buildings here, houses nine permanent exhibitions over two levels and provides some fascinating evidence of how we have evolved as a human race. After a most informative morning, it was time to head to another highlight in the region, Wat Pa Pu Kon, the magnificent temple in the mountain. Without a doubt, one of the most impressive temples I have ever visited, Wat Pa Pu Kon, affectionately known by the Thais as Heaven on Earth. You can see why. It was completed as recently as 2013. The beautiful feeling here is absolutely tangible. There's a beautiful 20 metre reclining Buddha inside. Let's have a look. Now there are temples and there are temples. And this is something special. This magical place is an absolute must-see when coming to Udon Thani. The nation's tourism authority says it's one of the seven must-see places to visit in all of Thailand. This place of worship is surrounded by 3,000 acres of lush forest. The magnificent 20 metre long and 9 metre high Buddha in Nirvana position and dragon statues are made of 43 Italian white Carrara marbles. The reclining Buddha alone took one year to build. It consists of three layers. Each piece of marble first needs to be carved into shape before all can be combined. In April of 2006, the team of craftsmen made the long journey to Carrara in Italy to source suitable white marble for this ambitious project. On the 31st of August 2006, the first piece of marble arrived at Wat Pa Pu Kon, and on the 18th of January 2008, the magnificent statue was finally completed. Wat Pa Pu Kon is a truly magnificent, majestic modern day structure in a beautiful forest setting and absolutely well worth a thorough inspection. Hi, I'm Dylan Jones. And I'm Bo Song Isawa. Join us as we travel to Old Thailand. And we share our food secrets and how to cook Thai food. This is about making Thai food at home with understanding and it will be delicious. Right, okay, we're going to do Pak Rapao. Pak Rapao is basically stir-fried mincemeat with holy basil and chilies. Right. This uh, can be beef, this can be chicken, pork, whatever you like, but today we're going to do it with beef. We are doing it with beef. Pak Rapao is an amazing dish. It's like a comfort food for Thais, really, isn't it? If I don't know what I'm going to eat, I'll probably opt to Pak Rapao. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just like when you eat meat pie and you don't know what to eat. <laughs> <laughs> What's important about this dish, because it is so simple, is you use really good ingredients. Uh, so it is with minced meat, but in this state we're using the ribeye steak, and we're going to mince it by hand, so it might, makes it nice and fluffy. The meat's well textured. I think it just makes the dish so much better than using a crap minced meat from the supermarket or something like that. You want to fry me an egg? Of course. You want your eggs like really crispy? Yeah, but runny in the middle. No problem, <laughs> I think I can manage. 
a lot of oil. Yeah, but you can heat, leave the oil in there, yeah, because you're going to use that wok, the same wok, to fry the meat afterwards. So. That's how we cook. We only wash once. One wok dish. Yeah. <laughs> While you're doing that, yeah. I'm going to do some chilies and some garlic. Now, when the Thais have the chilies, you've got the two different chilies. You've got the pikinu, which is this small one here. Uh, literal, literal translation is mouse shit chili. And then you have the longer pikin dabeng, which we call bird's eye chilies in Australia, I guess. The mouse shit chili is just a lot more fragrance. Yeah, it's also a little bit hotter, I find, that. Huh? Crispy outside and run it in the middle as you like. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so that's chilies done. I'm going to do some top garlic as well. Thai garlic? Thai garlic. Uh, and I'm going to slice it actually. Normally, most of the time we use modern pestle for pretty much everything. But uh, I personally quite like it sliced in this one because it's got a bit more texture with the rinse meat. Right. And this is holy basil in my hand and it's red. In Thailand, you've got more than one type of basil. And it's called holy basil because in India, it's always grow along the temple. <laughs> and with this um, red holy basil, it's more pungent, it's more fragrant. So if you can have your hand on to this, I recommend the red one only. But you can just use the green stuff, if you have to. It's better than not using it, no? But don't use the Thai sweet basil. No, that is completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> You're done yet? I'm done, I'm done. All right, well, I'm going to swap with you then. I don't it's smoky say... now. It's smoky. So I should start cooking? Is that, what, is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Excuse me? OK, so chili and garlic in together. Thank you. Nice hot wok. And you want to cook this until everyone starts sneezing and coughing around you. And if you've got an actual wok burner, fire flame at home, it's going to be even better because you can control the heat, go hotter and cooler. There you go, it must be ready. <laughs> Once the chili and garlic sort of fragrant cooked. And sneeze. Both sneezing, we're throwing our beef. As you see, it's nice and quick, it's ground off really quickly. We're going to add our fish sauce. Let's go. Now this dish is literally Hot and salty, yeah? As in spicy and salty. And a lot of I think the basil. correct term is shitloads. Yeah. Okay. All good? Done. I mean, it doesn't get much more simple than that, really. But it's so tasty. You're watching Destination Thailand. Luxury takes many forms. The Riviera Jom Tien captures the very best of today's lifestyle. Building on the success of Riviera Wongamat, Riviera Jom Tien will offer the ultimate in gracious living. 46 stories, stylish modern facilities, a family paradise just steps from the beach. Riviera Jong Tien, a new journey begins. Nigel Kornick is one of the most experienced developers in Thailand. Stephen O'Dell from Soda is an award-winning architect. Colin Okashimo is Asia's modern landscape Zen master. This is the team behind Padia's exciting new project, South Point. Developed by Kingdom Property, South Point is financed by Kung Thai Bank and has full EIA approval. Invest with the best and don't miss the point. You're watching Destination Thailand. Most international schools have projects that encourage their students to undertake some community service. But the region's international school in Bangkok goes one step further. Its round square philosophy promotes in young people a commitment beyond academic merit to personal growth and responsibility through service to others. The Round Square is a UK registered charity that aims to help students prepare for life by having them face it head on. They undertake experiences that demand courage, generosity, imagination, principle and resolution. The Round Square concept offers an enormous amount to every individual child. 
I think it's important to remember in their incredibly busy lives, when they're focusing on their academic work, they're thinking about their careers, they've got to remember that they're, they're individuals that are part of a major community here. And the Round Square organisation is all about connecting young people together and helping to develop their understanding of the wider world. Now, a lot of our boys and girls are very lucky. They're at a great school, they work hard, they enjoy their studies, they're planning their careers. But what about the rest of their society? What can they give back? And I think if we expose young people to a range of experiences and give them a chance to work with other people and see the society that they live in for what it is, then for so many of them it opens doors, it opens up their imagination. And for a lot of them it makes them think, you know, I can do a bit more. I, I can give something back into my community. The Round Square was founded in the 1960s by renowned educationalist Kurt Hahn and today has more than 100 member schools worldwide. Its six ideals are an international understanding and tolerance of others, democratic governance and justice, environmental stewardship, self-discovery through adventure, leadership and service to others. I think about ideals and my friends. I think the ideals kind of help me to grow because we get to talk about um, internationalism, democracy, environment, adventure, leadership, and service. And I think it's really important that everybody gets a chance to learn and have the opportunity to go forward with that. It has many opportunities for me to become a leader through the round square system and the ideals and also show everyone else my strengths as a leader. The school's Round Square ideals were demonstrated when most of the region's Year 12 students made their way to the coastal city of Pattaya for several days with some underprivileged children. These are the children of Pattaya's construction workers. Their parents are from Myanmar, Cambodia and Thailand's northeast. While both their mums and dads work on the city's building sites, many of the children live in squalid and dangerous camps nearby. Thanks to the efforts of the Melissa Cosgrove Foundation, Patty's Sanook Nursery takes the children away from the camps each day for lessons and safe playtime. On this day, several region students put their artistic skills to the test and help to brighten up the nursery. Then it was off to Padia's Royal Varuna Yacht Club for a fun day of games and sport. six pillars and one of those pillars is service so uh -huh. so part of that all our students at school experience service we promote uh, and encourage service projects just like this one this is and this also actual marries or couples in with our international baccalaureate year 12 mm -hmm. CAS program which is another uh, community service sort of program that year 12s have to have to complete. The region students have helped to raise much needed funds for the Melissa Cosgrove Foundation and the team at Sanook. Those efforts have brought smiles to many young faces. I love helping these kids and obviously today seeing them smiling it's, yes. it's great. Great, it is yeah. wonderful isn't it? Yeah, it's nice to see. And uh, the various uh, foreigners here today are impressed at how orderly the children are, how well behaved they are. They always like that. Yeah, they're always they're always like this, and it's thanks to the staff, uh, him and you at the mm. daycare centre. They do they do organise them. There's only two staff there with all these children, really? 86 children, so they need they need to be orderly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the children themselves, are the kids of parents 
living and working in Patia, yeah. but not able to, to look after them all day long, I imagine. Yeah, they work in the construction camps. Yeah. So their parents go to work for 12 hours a day, so it's safe for them to come to the daycare centre while they're at work. That's they the other notable thing today, uh, all these about 15-year-old children from year 12, I think, yeah. from the Regent School. Are they, they're regularly involved with your yeah, activities, they are. aren't they? Yeah, um, I mean, recently they're just here for four days, so they've mm. been over the weekend. Oh, so they get a holiday, revamping, that's nice. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> revamping the nursery. So, oh, great, yeah. yeah. And they've raised quite a lot of money up to now. I think it's about 100,000 baht. Wait, wait. So there's a real commitment there amongst the, the Regent yeah. School community. I mean, the, the students are all passionate about this as well. Isn't that terrific? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great to see. And that's why a round square makes a whole lot of sense. Visit us on Facebook and tell us what you like. Or check out our website at www.destinationthailand.tv Our presenters have their hair cut, coloured and styled at Moga Salons, now available at eight locations in Thailand. Our presenters use Philip B's organic skin and hair products, available now at the Emporium, Bangkok. <laughs>